Hi everyone, this is Ben with RegisteredNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to talk about that one class that you'll take as a health science major that strikes fear into the hearts of so many students anatomy and physiology and a lot of students will stress out about this class and they'll think that it's so hard and that they may even consider changing their major if they're struggling but really anatomy and physiology is not that bad if you know how to prepare and if you take the right approach for example there's no math that you really have to learn in anatomy and physiology and it's mostly just definitions and the body structures and functions so what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to give you two things first I'm going to give you an overview of what to expect and kind of what you're going to learn in this class and then second, I'm going to give you 11 tips to help you study and prepare for anatomy and physiology so that you can ace this class and not have to stress about it at all. Okay, so first of all, what are you going to learn in anatomy and physiology? You're going to learn the basic body structures and how they function. You'll learn about things like the organs, the muscles, the bones, tissue types, nerves, organ systems, your immune system, the cell structure, skin layers, and all that. And that may sound complicated, but it's actually not that bad. And you may find that you already know a lot of this information from high school and other classes. It just kind of builds on and expands a little bit. So there's three basic types of information that you're going to learn. First, you're going to read you're going to learn about definitions and that's just suffixes and prefixes and just the meaning of certain terms. Next, you're going to learn diagrams or have to study diagrams of certain body parts. And then third, you're going to learn the functions of these body system and body parts, what they do for the body, how they help it or how they uh, function in relation to another part. Okay, so now that you know some basics of what you're going to learn, I'm going to give you 11 study tips and these are surefire tips to help you pass okay so let's go number one you always want to read the chapter before you go to class and i know that just seems simple but the teacher will usually put in the syllabus what you need to read for each section and if you will just merely read over even if you just kind of skim and scan each page it will help build a basic foundation you'll know what the lecture is basically going to be about and you'll learn an overview of some of those terms then once you get to class the professor will tell you the important information you need to know they'll give you some illustrations to help you remember and so forth if they're a good teacher anyway Next, you want to make sure to show up for class regularly. And again, I know that you may have a boring professor or nursing school or something, but you want to go to each class and utilize your class time to the best of your ability. Sit there and take efficient notes. Try to listen to what they're saying. Try to understand. If you have a question, raise your hand and ask a question. Look at the book and just kind of read a little bit of the, the book as they're talking and just try to get the most information absorbed as you can in your class time. Third, you're going to have to use rote memorization to help you learn some of these terms. You just can't get away from that in anatomy and physiology. And I know a lot of people don't like to do rote memorization, but that's what you're going to have to do. And that is just where you repeat over and over and over again certain terms and functions and so forth. And that's how your brain's going to remember it. I'll just give you an example. Right here we have a definition of medial. It just means towards the midline of the body. So in order to remember this term, you just want to go over and say medial towards the midline of the body medial towards the midline of the body what's towards the midline of the body that's the medial area and just keep saying that to yourself over and over again and go right down the page if you have a whole list maybe you'll have a page or two of definitions for each chapter or for each examination and just go over and over go through one go through two three four five then start back at the top and just keep going and it does take a little work but if you do that you'll really grasp it and another way you can help your rote memorization is that after class, a lot of students like to rewrite their notes or to study their notes or say them out loud. And that's really important because you will forget a tremendous amount of information in school. In fact, if you don't study the material again that day, I think you, you, your brain forgets like 70 or 80% of what you learn in class. Like it's, it's astonishing really. So when you go home after class, just sit down and study over what you've learned. Maybe write out your notes again. Writing out really helps you remember things, especially if you'll repeat it and kind of say it to yourself as you're writing. And I remember an episode of the show Growing Pains way back in the day, and Kirk Cameron was kind of a mischievous guy, his character was, and he was going to cheat for a test, so he stayed up all night and wrote the answers on the bottom of his shoes. And the next day, he sat down to take the test, and he was like, hey, wait a second, I know this stuff. And he just sat there and he basically aced the test because he knew it. And then at the end, he props his feet up, you know, gloating from his accomplishment. And then the teacher thinks he really cheated when he didn't. 
it was kind of a funny episode, but it just points to the fact that when you write stuff out, it really helps. Number four, you want to repeat everything that you say or learn out loud. In other words, when you're studying these definitions, don't just sit there and say them silently to yourself. Say them out loud because when you say medial towards the midline of the body, saying that and making your brain actually announce and your vocal cords move and then you hear it again, that just helps you learn it so much more deeply. And you can use, when you're doing rote memorization, you can even make your own flashcards if you want by just taking a regular sheet of paper and using a program like Microsoft Word, make two columns and put the term in one column and then the definition of that term in the other. And you can just fold it in half and so you can look at the term and then look at the definition. That's kind of like a, a cheap flashcard way that you can use to help you as you study that out loud. Okay, number five, print diagrams off and then complete them over and over until you have them in your mind. And I'll just give you a brief example. Here's an anatomy textbook. And you see right here, whoops, there is a brain diagram and it just shows you the different parts of the brain. And basically, you can take a blank sheet of paper if you don't have a scanner, put over top of that and just trace it out and draw blank lines out. And then take a scrap sheet and just sit and try to write out what each section is. You can number the blanks to help you keep track of it. And then if you do that over and over, you're going to get that diagram and you're going to learn that material. Okay, number six. Try to do this. This is a way to learn stuff. Incorporate everything that you've learned for that week or for that lesson into your conversation over the next day or two with your friends, your family, your spouse or boyfriend or whatever. And that is really going to help you to remember it. For example, let's say that you're going to go work out at the gym and you've learned about the muscle systems. Well, what you can do is you can talk to your friend and be like, yeah, I think I'm going to work out on my biceps today and then maybe my triceps and I might hit my lat muscles as well. Well, that's a way that you're going to remember these muscles and have them so that on a test, you're going to easily recognize that. All right, number seven, this is another strategy you can use. Try to make a joke about something you've learned and play a prank on someone or just say a funny joke about it. And I remember that one thing that was going on in high school whenever we were learning about the skin layers is that someone would go up to a girl or a guy and they'd be like, oh man, your epidermis is showing. And a person would be like, what, huh? And the epidermis, of course, is just the outer layer of your skin. Right now, you can see my epidermis right here. But by saying like, oh, your epidermis, you know, people would be like, huh, what? And it's just a funny way to remember it. All right, next, you want to use visual imagery for something that you're having trouble memory remembering. And that is a huge way. In fact, some people can learn a whole deck of cards. They'll have like these memorization challenges and people can memorize the order of a whole deck of cards randomly just by applying some very interesting visual Im imagery in their mind about it. And I'll give this example. I remember that in an anatomy lab class that I took with my wife, the teacher was going over the obturator muscle. And most people have never heard of the obturator muscle, okay? And I, I've never heard of it since that anatomy class. But it's basically a muscle that attaches to the top of your femur and it goes right down to the hip bone, right where the private area is. And what it does, it just helps laterally, laterally rotate the femur with extension and abduct the femur with flexion. And basically, uh, the lab teacher sat up there and she's like, you know how I remember this back when I was in nursing school? She said, I would think of that song, he's a smooth operator. And she's like, and I thought of a guy going up to some girl randomly and putting his hand on her thigh and trying to get a little frisky and then moving it down into her private area. And then the girl getting upset and just slapping the guy. And the class kind of giggled, but I tell you, my wife and I have never forgotten that illustration, even to this day. I've never again heard of the obturator muscle, but I have never forgotten that that's where that muscle is located because that was just such a funny visual imagery that just stuck in my mind. And so when you're doing this in nursing school, try to think, is there some visual imagery, something I can connect this random thing with? And then just try to put that in your mind. Okay. Next, number nine, you want to try to use hacks to remember things that you're having trouble remembering, such as an acrostic. An acrostic is a word or sentence that corresponds to another word. And I'll just give you an example of an acrostic right here. And this is to remember the white blood cells from greatest to least, okay? Never let a monkey eat bananas. All right, that's just a simple phrase. The first letter of each word corresponds to a white blood cell 
So never neutrophils, L for lymphocytes, M for monocytes, E for eosinophils, and B for basophils. And that's just a short hack that you can put in your mind to remember those white blood cells. Okay, next you got acronyms. And an, ac an acronym is basically just a short word where each letter will represent a whole word. And so for Mona, for example, that's a way that a lot of nursing students remember treatment for chest pain. And Mona just stands for M, morphine, O, oxygen, N, nitrogen, or nitroglycerin, and A, aspirin. And again, that's just a treatment for chest pain, a simple uh, acronym that you can remember. And then number 11, the last study tip, is get a study guide or find some practice quizzes or some practice information and go over and over and over that just to help you remember it. And a lot of times your university will put a study book for anatomy and physiology. And if you think that you're going to struggle in this class, go ahead and just buy the book. It'll probably help you. And a lot of textbooks now, of course, come with online database of questions that you can practice. And that's great. And you can practice those. And in the videos that we're going to be making in the future about anatomy and physiology, we're going to try to make a short quiz or a short little learning tutorial for you so that after you watch a video, you can go and practice some of those. Okay, so that's it. Anatomy and physiology is not that bad. Take it seriously. Go into it with a positive attitude and use those 11 study tips that I told you about, and you're going to do great in this class. So thank you so much for watching.